So it's a, a tremendous pleasure to um, be uh, opening this meeting with uh, a presentation and then a discussion really about the white paper. And this is, uh, you know, the, the first birthday of the human satellite community. Um, we've been, we were born about a year ago and we've now been developing and coming together. And um, what Aviv and I are going to do is to give a short introduction uh, before we lead into a, a, a community discussion about the first plan to build a draft atlas. So the, the idea behind the human cell atlas, which is driven through a combination of different communities, including genomics and computational biology communities, is that we, we tackle the human body, human tissues and organs in a systematic way to build a periodic table of our cells. And this is actually a really powerful analogy that, that I love. I love periodic tables. I've built a periodic table of protein complexes. And the reason that this is so powerful is that the periodic table is not just a classification system of cells and, and tissues or, and, and systems, as you can see here. The periodic table, like the periodic table of the elements, also has the, a predictive power. That is the meaning of the periodic table. So classification is very gratifying in itself to many of us. We're, we're sort of intrinsically classifiers, but it has a predictive power because it tells us about tissue, how tissues function, how they act in terms of the composition and interactions between cells, just the way the, the, the rows and columns of the periodic table tell us about the, the orbitals and atomic number. And the, the reason that this endeavor has, uh, is now ripe is, is really driven by technolo technology. It's driven by technological innovations which have taken us uh, from on a 150 year journey of single cell biology from microscopy all the way through the very high throughput methods for characterizing individual cells now. And why is this so powerful conceptually to be able to, to, to look at single in, in a disaggregated state and, and in a spatial context. The reason is really, if you can see it very clearly with this beautiful analogy of the smoothie and the, the fruit salad and, and, and the tart, is that the smoothie is basically, you take a tissue, you grind it, and you characterize it genomically through a, an, an average ensemble of cells. Single cell <laughs> genomics gives us the constituent parts and, and allows us to start to make a, a periodic table. And the tart, the, the fruit tart on the right hand side, shows us the physical neighborhood of the cells and allows, allows us to really get to this atlas that we're aiming for. What can this exercise tell us, this, this, the, the atlas? Um, there, there are very profound biological insights, and, and Ida has mentioned some of them that, that you've seen. Um, there, there's the, the fundamental question of cell type and cell state. Uh, I just mentioned the location of cells within tissue architecture. Um, the, the, the lineage uh, is, is an aspect that will, um, that will feed into the human cell atlas. And also transitions, transitions in development, in differentiation, in, um, in, in sh on a short time scale, in proliferation, and so on. Now, um, we can look at the cellular phenotypes as, as a coordinate system. And the, the molecular fingerprint tells us about uh, the cell types. We can cluster them and identify very rare ones. As I said, we can quantify locations and computationally uh, relate cells to each other in, on a spectrum of activation, for instance, and in these transitions that are so beautifully presented here in terms of um, uh, the hematopoiesis. And, and, and I also mentioned sort of, uh, cyclic processes like cell state, circadian patterns, and so on, can also be computationally captured through pseudotime inference um, from, from single cell data. So the, our mission, and, and that we uh, came to a consensus on quite early on, is to create a comprehensive reference map of the types and properties of all human cells the fundamental unit of life as a basis for understanding, diagnosing, monitoring, treating health and disease. And cells are really these fundamental units that we can now capture in terms of the complete molecular fingerprint. So I've mentioned the different biological insights that these technologies now allow us to capture. But as you heard from Ido's talk, there are also very translational medical applications that are incredibly powerful and that um, you know, make a case for this endeavor. 
in a in a very compelling way. Um, so what Ido what Ido was addressing to some extent is is diagnostic. So single cell methods for profiling um, the uh, a disease state and monitoring its progress. Um, single cell profiling will t uh, a human cell atlas will very quickly tell us about variants, um, genetic variants, and uh, how they how that their penetrance basically in different tissues around the body. Equally, drug toxicity. There's a particular target. Um, where that target acts will very quickly become clear with the human cell atlas, um, where that, that gene is expressed and the target is present. Disease mechanisms, very, very obviously, through the comparison of the healthy reference to a disease state. And then regenerative biology in the sense of how do IPS-derived cells and organoids actually compare to the, the developmental or adult uh, uh, sort of homeostatic state. So I think there, the, that... Um, you know, the, 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 the case is becoming ever clearer. Now, the, um, the history that some of you may be curious about, and, and it's also good to remind ourselves because it really has been a, um, a whirlwind, is, as I said, this is our first birthday. Um, we convened the, the first meeting about a year ago in London, in, in, uh, exactly in October, and... Um, then we basically, you know, very quickly um, communities formed. Um, there were there, the, the, the methods planning and the DCP planning took place very rapidly. Working groups started forming. The analysis working group was a great example, and we'll hear more about that later. Very important for this human cell is also tissue procurement pipelines, which are starting to be tested, and methods of tissue procurement. We then had the, the technology meeting that was hosted in Stanford in February, and then the computational meeting that was hosted in Stockholm in, in June, and that coincided with the launch of the DCP. And then we've had um, uh, organizing committee meetings, and we've had uh, computational jamborees, where the computational communities got together and compared notes, solved problems in real time, working extremely intensively and excitingly together. We had one in Hingston that I, that I sort of uh, experienced the energy and excitement going on. Um, we had a small common coordinate framework workshop, and you'll hear more about that. That's basically to um, converge on a system for describing in a, in, a, um, in a coherent way, capturing metadata really about locations of cells and where they're sampled in the body and how the, uh, to compare individuals. And we're now here in, in October where we have this uh, fantastic, very exciting meeting here with the, the, the white paper launch. And this is sort of a historic moment for the Human Cell Atlas because this is a blueprint for um, how we're going to move forward to a first draft. And um, we, Aviv and I really look forward to discussing this with you. So there are other meetings coming up and we'll, we'll come back to them and announce them at the end of the meeting. What are the HCA values? Very importantly, and this is emphasized right at the beginning of the white paper. Transparency and open data sharing. Open data, basically. That's something that the genomics community has stood for and has accelerated science through openness and streaming of data releases. Of course, we're very committed to quality. Um, that's sort of in our DNA as, as um, scientists. At the same time, intellectual flexibility in terms of committing to technologies um, is, has, uh, you know, this has been sort of hammered into us over and over again by people who have experience with consortia, the Human Genome Project, you know, which went from sort of Sanger sequencing to next generation sequencing and so on. The, the community, building a community um, that's, that's open-minded and has the right spirit Diversity, inclusion, and equity, not just with respect to the community, but also with respect to samples. At the same time, respecting privacy and ethics. And then uh, coming back to sort of technological flexibility, technological innovation and excellence. And very importantly, not only at the experimental level, but also at the computational level, clearly. Okay, so um, the, the bulk of the white paper is about a first draft. And what is a first draft of a human cell atlas? That's what we're here to, to present and to clarify. So um, 
in terms of numbers of cells, it could be 30 to sort of 100 million covering major tissues and systems at the histological level, having a cellular and a spatial branch to make this atlas of how cells relate to each other in space, focusing on healthy donors with a limited inclusion of disease states, obviously covering both genders, geographic and ethnic diversity, and some age diversity. Then a next, in a next phase, there will be more scope for a fuller coverage of tissues, organs, and systems, and full comprehensive uh, mapping of, of organs in their entirety, their complexity. A complete cellular and spatial branch, having healthy donors, as well as cohorts of disease conditions, again, gender, and geographic, and, and ethnic diversity, and also addressing the aging process in humans. So human development, but also human aging. Once Know, process that, that we, we all feel is, is going on. So at this point, I will hand over to Aviv, my partner in crime throughout yes. this, and <laughs> um, she will take you through uh, more specifically technology and other elements of building an atlas. Thank you.